I've always been fascinated with the braking distance of motorcycles and um, I think it's more so since I've been spending time with the Californian Superbike School on track and talking to people in classrooms about the techniques of motorcycle riding. Um, I, I'd heard it suggested that over the past you know, 30, 40, 50 years or so, that the average braking distance of a motorcycle really hasn't altered because one of the limiting factors, or major limiting factors, is that you've only got one G of downforce on a motorcycle. So that gravitational pull is going to be a limiting factor. But rather than just regurgitate theory and uh, you know, throw out ideas and opinions, I thought, what better way to do this than to go and get some data specifically. How we're going to get the data is this. We're going to use three different bikes. We're going to use this particular bike, which is a very light um, commuting bike, which is the Braap Moto 4. We're going to use the BMW S1000RR, which has got high-end tyres or track tyres and high-end braking components. And then we'll also use the heavy BMW R1200GS, which is significantly heavier than these bikes. What we're going to do is we're going to ride those bikes at exactly 100 kilometres an hour, we're going to measure the braking distance from 100 kilometres an hour to exactly zero. And the way we'll do that is we'll do a run with the front brake only, we'll do a run with the back brake only. And then with the S1000RR, I also want to explore the thumb brake specifically and see what that does on its own. And then uh, if we get the chance, we're going to combine the two. We're going to see, talk about braking with both the front and rear. So uh, like I said, rather than have opinions about this, let's just get some data. So uh, that's it. Let's go and get it. Well, the results are in. We've actually gone out and done the test. So what I want to do is, first of all, just explain again the format that we followed. And then I'm going to show you the results in terms of distances. The format was simply this. We had three bikes, as I said earlier. We had the Moto 4 from Braap, we had the R1200GS BMW, and then we also had the high-end S1000RR BMW. The key thing about it is we only had one rider, and I would say I'm an experienced rider with 50 or so years of riding, um, which in this particular case means that I'm pretty comfortable with breaking a bike uh, you know, to the extremes of its braking capability. So uh, that was probably an important factor in actually getting distances here because the distances would vary considerably across different riders. The way that we ran it was we ran at 100 kilometers an hour and we utilized an app, the Wave app, a Waze app, I should say, W-A-Z-E, to give us a consistent reference to what would be an actual 100 kilometers per hour. And the differences in what we were getting on the app and the motorcycles themselves ranged anything up to 14 kilometers an hour difference. So on one bike, it was 114 by the Speedo and 100 kilometers an hour by the app. And then another bike was 108 kilometers an hour by the Speedo and 100 kilometers uh, an hour by the app. So that was important that we uh, applied the same speed to all of the different uh, motorcycles. We then did a test. Uh, we did front brake only. We did rear brake only, and then for two of the bikes, we did a combination of braking. And uh, we did that because the, you know, the rear end of the bike wasn't lifting up under the front braking conditions. Uh, it was on the sport bike, so we, we ended up not doing the combination braking for the sport bike. Anyway, here's the results specifically. So if you look at the screen, what you see up there is the three different bikes, and we've got the distances... Uh, stopping distances that relate to those specifically right beside those. And uh, the distances themselves uh, are broken up into three parts, rear brake, front brake, and then combo distance. The increments are 10 kilometers an hour, and then it goes up to a maximum of 100 um, meters. I should, I should say 10 meters, not 10 kilometers an hour. And uh, the distance is up to 100 meters. And uh, these are the results. First of all, rear brake distance. Rear brake only, the Moto 4 took 85 metres to stop. The rear brake only on the R1200GS, 82 metres. Uh, so it was a bit better, even though it was quite a, a significantly heavier bike. But the real shock for me was the S1000RR was the worst of all. 95 metres to actually stop on the rear brake only. So, you know, you've got around about a 200 kilogram motorcycle. So it's not as heavy as the R1200GS, the heavier than the Moto 4 but the brakes on that were terrible. So they, I don't know if there was something wrong with them or whatever, but um, they really faded quite bad, even though we've got some high-end Brembo brake pads uh, on the standard disc. So uh, those were the rear brake only distances. 
Then we went the front brake distance. The Moto 4, 53 meters front brake only. The R1200 uh, GS, 49 meters. So I was quite surprised with that. And uh, there was a lot of activation of the ABS on the R1200 GS. So it's got quite an active ABS system on that, uh, which works well on the dirt too. The front brake distance for the S1000RR was 43 metres. So it was 6 metres better than the, the R1200 and 10 metres better than the Moto4. So it's what I would expect uh, with the S1000RR. It's got um, a sticky race tech race tyre and we've got standard discs on this particular set of wheels, but it's got Brembo SR brake pads on it, uh, which had been bedded in on these particular discs. So uh, I'm not surprised that it was much better. The, the distance itself is uh, better than I thought it would be because it was significantly less than 50 metres. So well, I thought it'd be closer to 50 metres. But anyway, uh, combination distance. So that's combination of front and rear braking together. We were able to do it with the Moto4 and the R1200 GS. Uh, we weren't able to do it. We, we didn't even try to do it with the S1000RR because when we were braking uh, front brake only, that, when we applied that, that, the rear wheel was basically lifting in the air. So uh, it was really braking quite significantly hard at the front end. So it would have been a pointless activity. Now, the uh, combo, 49 metres, so we knocked off four metres on the Moto4 but the surprise was the co with the combined front and brake, uh, front and rear brake uh, application was the R1200 GS, which dropped down to 41 meters stopping distance at 100 kilometers an hour. The interesting thing about that was when we applied the front and rear brakes together, both front and rear ABS were being activated. So um, the rear brake is quite good on the R1200 GS and. Uh, I'm not surprised by the performance of that, but uh, significantly better because we could not get um, that level of stopping with the front brake only. So the rear brake actually helped. And uh, you know, I've had people say to me that there's no point putting the rear brake on. Well, in the case of the R1200GS, it actually makes a significant difference. And that's how I ride it on the ranges. So what do we know? Basically, if we look at the average distances, based on the data that we've got, the rear brake average was 87 meters. So rear brake only uh, at 100 kilometers an hour, it's gonna take around about 87 meters to pull up on average. The front brake average, 48 meters. So that's pretty consistent with a lot of the data that you'll actually find online. Um, you'll find it varies quite significantly, some of the data, but they, in many cases, they distinguish between an expert rider and an amateur rider. And uh, that does make a difference on the braking dis uh, distances. The combination average, 45 metres um, on average, and that was only for the two bikes as we explained. But this is an important thing that I want to wrap up with. One, the distances, they're quite significant on a motorcycle. And one of the limiting factors is the most you can actually brake is going to be in a situation where you're going to have a um, gravitational, downward gravitational force of 1G. The Motorcycle, compare it to a car. Now, this information I got from the National Association of City Transportation Officials, which is an American group. So they had some information there. The typical car stopping distance for a motor vehicle, which is less affected by expertise and pro quality drivers, um, is 36 to 43 metres. Typical stopping distance for 100 kilometres an hour or 60 miles an hour. So the important takeaway for anyone watching this who's not really familiar with motorcycle braking and things like that is that the motorcycle does not stop as fast as a motor vehicle. The thinking distance, our thinking around braking occurs in a much shorter distance, but the physical capability of a motorcycle to stop is not going to match the car. So if someone in front of you is 10 meters ahead and they pull up or start to pull up in an emergency braking, and you don't react for 10 meters in that car, in that motorcycle, you're going to run into that motor car, and that's a fact. Um, or, you know, you'll need to avoid it by going either side of it or something like that. So uh, there you go. Hope you found that interesting. Uh, I'll see you in another video. Bye.